بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا ومعلمنا وقرة أعيننا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all forms of praise Because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy and deserving of praise We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his choices, blessings and mercies upon our beloved master and guide the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his pure and chaste wives, his noble and beloved companions, and all those who follow in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, until the day of Qiyamah, Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The Quran al-Kareem is a book that is absolutely overflowing with hope, overflowing with mercy, it is brimming with forgiveness, and this is a book which will provide hope and solace to those that feel they have perhaps drifted from the Sirat al-Mustaqim. They feel that perhaps they are burdened and bogged down with too many sins in their lives. But in any case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dispels this notion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Furqan, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما That as for those or except for those who repent and who believe firmly and sincerely in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do good deeds after they have done perhaps sins, but they follow up their, their actions with good deeds, فَأُولَٰئِكَ Then those are the people, يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will exchange their sins for good deeds. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving, ever merciful. صدق الله العظيم so this verse comes after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about certain sins. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the act of fornication, the act of zina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of committing murder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the committing of shirk. Now shirk as we know is a very very serious major sin. It is a sin in fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. He does, Allah forgives everything except shirk however in context we need to understand if a person repents from a life of shirk if a person for whatever reason has engaged or comes from a life of shirk then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive this person if he sincerely repents but generally speaking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept or forgive the act of shirk however after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these various sins, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah mentions firstly that these sins will lead to Jahannam. These are sins which if perpetrated and if the individual persists and does not repent from these actions, from these sins, he does not change his life, he does not change his ways, uh, then this could lead a person to the hellfire. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from Jahannam in this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who have been set free from Jahannam. May Allah protect us and our families and our progenies from Jahannam. Ameen. However, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after mentioning that these sins lead to the hellfire and that there is a severe punishment for these things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that illa man tab except for the individual that repents except for the individual that repents so you may have committed these sins you may have committed murder you may have committed zina you may have committed shirk may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and guide us but if a person repents sincerely from these actions and then brings himself onto surat al-mustaqim Firstly, with his iman and belief, and this is wa'amana, he believes firmly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he believes in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he follows the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa'amila amalan saliha. So he repents, he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he brings himself onto 
Iman completely. And then this is as far as belief is concerned. And then he follows it up with a physical, a, a physical uh, sort of uh, action, a physical aspect of his Iman. And that is the Ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he then does good deeds. Then those people, despite having committed those sins in the past, those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِ مَحَسَنَاتِ Allah will exchange their sins for good deeds. Allah will wipe clear the records of sin. Allah will wipe them clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will even make the angels forget. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will record good deeds for this individual. And why is this done? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever forgiving, ever merciful. So it doesn't matter what a person does. It doesn't matter how sinful a person is because there's a beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says, Inna Allah yaqabalu tawbata al-abdi ma lam yugharghir. For an individual, yes, we are not condoning sin, but it doesn't matter the extent of your sin as long as you are willing and prepared to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent. Because in Allah yaqabalu tawbata al-abdi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to and ready to accept the repentance of his servant, ma lam yugharghir, as long as his soul has not left his body. You have the opportunity to repent to Allah. You have the opportunity to turn to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to accept your tawbah and forgive you right up until the very last moment that your soul is still in your body. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prepared to do that. And there is another beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he says that At-ta'ibu min al-dhamb kaman la dhamb lahu that the person who repents from sin, a person that seeks forgiveness after committing a sin, is like a person that has no sin. In other words, it doesn't matter that you sinned. The, uh, what matters is that you turn to Allah in forgiveness. You have recognized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that can forgive and that will forgive. And this is what is important for the believer. To recognize your Rabb. To understand that your Rabb is there for you. To understand that your Rabb is prepared to forgive you. That Allah is merciful. That Allah is forgiving. And this is the thing. This is key. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so amazing. Not only is He prepared to wipe clean the slate of your sin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of His abundant and infinite mercy is prepared to write down and record good deeds instead of those sins. So we must never ever ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another portion of the Quran al-Kareem that لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Never ever despair, never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You could have committed any and every sin, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you as long as you repent sincerely. So on this point, let us understand what is repentance. What constitutes as tawbah? One is istighfar. One is seeking forgiveness, which is something that we do constantly. These are things that uh, is something that we do for perhaps minor offenses and even major offenses, but more so for minor offenses that we may have incurred. And this is the thing where we say astaghfirullah. Even Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he was divinely protected from sin and mistake, but he says that an inni astaghfirullah fi yawmi mi'atamarra. That he would seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a single day up to a hundred times, if not more. So this is the thing, to seek forgiveness. And there are many benefits for istighfar. Man lazim al-istighfar. جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَ وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Another beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a person that is uh, constant and, uh, and perpetual in his forgiveness, uh, seeking forgiveness Man, someone who makes istighfar a lot and continuously جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open 
uh, uh, will create an opening, an exit for this person from every constriction and difficulty. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make a way for this person. No matter what grief and, and, and depression, whatever it is you are suffering from, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by virtue of seeking forgiveness and making istighfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create ease for you and comfort for you from your grief and your sadness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will sustain you from avenues you could not even expect or imagine. So this is the benefit of seeking forgiveness. As in mustaqil ibadah, as a something that we just do as an ibadah for the benefits and something that we also do to seek forgiveness for things that we have done wrong. Maybe we lost our temper today with someone. Uh, maybe we were rude to someone. May Allah forgive us. May Allah grant us good character. Maybe we were unnecessarily harsh with our children. Whatever the case may be, you had a bad day. And you're feeling bad. Astaghfirullah. 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 Allah, please forgive me. Help me to be better. Correct my character. These kind of things. Now, when it comes to tawbah, tawbah is something which is extremely important to understand. It's not just, oh Allah, forgive me, and then you go and sin again. No. When it comes to sincere repentance, repentance is something that must be done with ikhlas. It must be done with sincerity. Truly understanding that you have committed a serious offense and it requires an element of change in your life. So firstly, the first step to tawbah is nadama. This is to experience or to have some element of regret in your heart that I've done something wrong. This is a very good sign. If a person does something wrong, if a person commits a sin and he has in his heart that I did something wrong, you know, I really, that I shouldn't have done that. That element of regret, this nadama, this is a very good sign of iman that, you know, you've acknowledged sin. Some people, may Allah save us, but their hearts have become so hard and, and they've become so uh, desensitized to sin that they do not consider evil or bad actions as something wrong. It becomes like an everyday mundane action. They do not even perceive this element of regret. So firstly is the step is nadama, regret. You must have an element of I feel bad for what I've done. Secondly is a person must seek the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a verbal acknowledgement that we have done something wrong. Then we ask Allah for forgiveness. But thirdly and most importantly, a person needs to abstain from the action that was done. If it is a serious action, like major sins, you know, zina, in whatever other form of haram, there are many, many people in the ummah, unfortunately, that are involved in these kind of sins. May Allah grant them afia and guidance. May Allah grant them the strength to leave those things, and may Allah protect us. Uh, so this is the thing that is, we have to abstain from doing that action again, and make a concerted effort. And then fourthly, an azam, a firm intention that we have to make, a firm intention that we will not return to that sin again. And this, inshallah, if it is done with sincerity, will constitute as what is referred to as tawbat al nasuha a sincere repentance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive and accept insha'Allah. So lastly, we end off with this. It does not matter. You know, a person may feel that I have, you know, I've got so many sins. Where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to forgive a sinner like me? It's too, I'm too far gone. There is no hope for me. A lot of people have this in the back of their minds. A lot of people feel like, you know, there's no chance for someone like me. There's no way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Do not ever despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all your sins provided that your repentance is there. So it does not matter how many steps you have taken away from the straight path, how many steps you have taken away from Islam, how many steps you have taken away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not matter how many steps you have taken away from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It only takes one step to get back to Allah. And that is the step of tawbah and seeking forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. Kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdini. Your Rabb is with you. Allah is with you. He's going to guide you. He's going to show you the way. You just need to reach out and grab hold of that Allah that is always there for you. Allah is waiting for you. And lastly, there's a very beautiful quote that I had. Uh, I read somewhere many uh, some, some time ago. And I thought I'd share that considering that this is the month of Quran. And this is the month that we spend extra time in the masjid. Alhamdulillah. Uh, and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for granting us an opportunity to spend our taraweeh in the masjid this year. Um, 
And this is the thing, if a person feels that he is too sinful, there is a quote that was written on one of the masjid doors, uh, that if you feel that you have too many sins, then please come inside, come into the masjid, because the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy are always open. And I leave you with that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from one and all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, forgive us our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the strength to inshallah improve and to become better. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from one and all. Barakallahu feekum. Jazakumullahu khaira. Wa akhiru da'awana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.